bones connected to the leg bone. The leg bones connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bones connected to the fourth graders. Oh my gosh. Hey, I didn't even realize you were here. How have you been? I am so excited you're back. I can't wait to start this new story with you. I'm not sure if my little song that I was listening to gave it away, but I was just getting ready for this lesson today with you guys. I hope you loved the ending of Fragile Frogs, um, but I'm so excited to start this new story with you. As you already know, my name is Mrs. Lawson, and I'm one of your language arts teachers, and we are starting this story today called Skeletons Inside and Out. And we're not gonna be reading much today, but we are gonna start figuring out what this story is gonna be like. So our learning intention today, we are learning to use details and examples from the text to explain our understanding of important concepts in the text. Now, if you don't know what an important concept is, you know, it is like the main important thing they want you to take away, the author wants you to learn. So we know we are successful today when we can identify those important concepts in the text, those important lessons or those important details the author wants us to learn. And then we can use details and examples from the text to support our answers to the questions that I'm gonna ask you. So the foundational skill today is these suffixes. So a suffix comes at the end of a word. So if you can see I-V-E, if, comes at the end of this word protective. And it says in skeletons inside and out, it tells about a protective kind of shell. So if you ever see I-V-E at the end of a word, it's telling you that it's likely to whatever the base word is at the beginning. So let's look at this. If it is likely to protect. So protective means something that is likely to protect. It's that easy, guys. You just take the IVE, change it to likely to, and then you add in likely to, and then you add back in this suffix. So likely to protect. Easy peasy, right? Now let's go on to the next slide. Got to clear out my stuff. I think I do that like every time we draw on it. Okay, next we're gonna look at ist. So a scientist. Ist, if you see that at the end of a word, it means a person who. So what does scientist mean, fourth graders? A person who what? Exactly. You know I can hear you through here. So it is a person who maybe studies or works with science, who studies science. Gosh, y'all are so good at this already. So we're gonna clear that out. We're gonna look at our last slide. Ness, so this is our last ness, right? Our last suffix. Ness, if you ever see that, is the state of being. So that's kind of a weird one, right? So it means at this moment, that's how you feel. So if you're shyness, what are you being? You're being shy, right? I shouldn't, I don't need to type that out, right? So you're being shy. Man, you guys were just so good at that. So now let's look at this. This is what you'll be doing on your own today. You will be identifying the base word. So that's that word that came before the suffix in each word. Below, try and use the meaning of the base word and the suffix, either ist, if, or ness, to figure out the meaning of each word. So you got specialist, adaptive, alertness, and then you have three other ones to work with. So you're gonna have that to practice with, and then you're also gonna have this. It's write each word in the correct column. So each column here has one of the suffixes, so that part should be easy. You're just identifying, does the word end in ist? if or ness. Then you're going to choose one word from each column and you're going to try and use it in a sentence to show to us, hey, I know what this word means. I'm already getting these suffixes. So fourth graders, I know you can do this. You already were killing it with me at the beginning. I can't wait to see how you do. 
Okay, vocabulary is a little different today. You know, Miss Lawson, I like to give you those clues and then you find the meaning, right? Well, this story is a little different because these two words that I thought you might need to know before we read, if we look at exoskeleton and endoskeleton, they're both on page five. And there's something special about those words. Do you notice? You guys are so right. They're bold or they're bigger. They're black, right? They're sticking out. So we have endoskeleton and exoskeleton. And the cool thing about that is if you ever see those kinds of words in a story, that means the author is probably going to give you those definitions somewhere in the text. So the cool thing about this text is we have a glossary, which is on page 31. And the cool thing about a glossary, if you look, it has some words and it gives you the definition. So we don't even have to go and figure those out. The author provided those for us. So an endoskeleton, now that has a prefix. You know, we just worked with suffixes. Those come at the end of the word. These both have prefixes. One is endo and one is exo. That's the only difference between those words. So the endoskeleton is the, what is that? Why don't you read that? Right, the endoskeleton is inside the body, like in, inside. So it's kind of a clue with that prefix. What about an exoskeleton? Right, good job reading that without me, guys. It is outside, so it's an animal that has, can you imagine if we had a skeleton outside our body? be kind of crazy, right? Our skeleton is an endoskeleton, but some creatures, some other things do have exoskeletons, so we're going to learn about that. Now, let's look at this cover in the illustrations. Do you think this book is going to be fiction or non-fiction? What are we thinking? Mm-hmm. Right, so, so if those of you thought fiction, this probably isn't going to be a fiction. This is going to be a nonfiction text because we're going to be learning from it. It looks like from these pictures, let's look ahead. From these two pictures, we've looked at them and on the cover, and then this is the inside cover, it looks like we're going to be learning. What are we going to be learning about? Right, I'm so excited you guys figured that out. We're not just learning about human skeletons. I heard somebody say, look at this, what animal is this? Yeah, it's a turtle. So we are gonna be learning about not just human skeletons and how they work, but also like animals maybe. And then over here, what kind of picture is this? You guys ever seen something like this? Guess we'll see. And then here's our table of contents. Tells us what we're gonna be learning about today. We should be learning all about skeletons and I don't think we get past that point today. We're just reading the introduction. So let's go ahead and get started. But oh my gosh, as I say that, there's a big stop sign there, which means we need to stop and read that question. What important concept is being described in the first paragraph. So remember the important concept is the big idea. So we're going to read this first paragraph and we're going to think in our heads, what is the big idea in this? And then we're going to have to find some supporting details. So keep your eyes out, those magnifying glasses out to look for that while we read. All about skeletons. The skeleton is an important part of the human body and most animals' bodies. It supports the body's weight and gives it shape. The skeleton protects the soft parts inside the body. It also works with muscles to help the body move. Animals come in all shapes and sizes, and so do their skeletons. Their skeletons allow them to move in many different ways and to do many different things. Oh, I think I realized this is the second paragraph. It just didn't, I didn't notice. So we're just focusing on this first paragraph for that question. So what do you guys think the main idea is or the big concept? Hopefully this up here 
kind of gave it away, the heading. Headings are big when it comes to informational text because they tell us what this whole section is going to be about. So it says all about skeletons, but this first paragraph specifically focused on whose skeleton. The skeleton is an important part of the human body and most animals' bodies. So it's basically just saying a skeleton is important, guys. We're going to read this whole book about it. It's important. Now we want to figure out what supports that. Why is it important? It supports the body's weight and gives it shape. So right there, it's showing us if we didn't, it's supporting us to keep us standing up straight. So that's one way it's important. The skeleton protects the soft parts inside the body. So it's protective. The second way that it's important. Then it also works with muscles to help the body move. Ding, 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 guys. Did you figure that out without me? I figured that you did. So great job. And we're going to keep reading. Animals come in all shapes and sizes, and so do their skeletons. Their skeletons allow them to move in many different ways and to do many different things. To see how these skeletons work, read on. Then use the bony skeleton and muscle in your own hand to turn the page. So we're gonna read this caption down here. This boy's skeleton works with muscles to move him, to help him move in all sorts of ways. So if we see it kind of highlights the muscles as they're working. So right here, his arm muscle is holding his weight. And then you can tell, look, his leg kicks him up and all those muscles are working. Pretty cool stuff. Ooh, this is cool. Skeletons work differently in different animals. In mammals, birds, and many other animals, the skeleton is a framework made of the bones inside the skin. A skeleton on the inside of the body is called an endoskeleton. We already learned about that, right? In other animals, the skeleton is a hard covering outside the body. This is called an exoskeleton. The shell of a crab or a beetle is an exoskeleton? Guys, that is so cool. I never knew that a shell was actually their skeleton. Wow. Like an endoskeleton, an exoskeleton protects and supports the animal's body. However, some exoskeletons cannot expand as an animal grows. When this happens, an animal must shed its old exoskeleton and grow a new, larger one. So up here it says, when the exoskeleton becomes too small, the crab crawls out of it. It then grows a new one. So this crab is gonna grow a new shell at some point. Down here, a beetle's colorful exoskeleton protects its organs and delicate wings. All right, so that's, is that all we're learning? Oh my gosh, that's all we get to read today. What a bummer, but that is okay. So let's look back. We already kind of talked about these pictures, but how did that illustration help our understanding of the text, guys? Because they don't just throw pictures in there for no reason. They're supposed to help us. So what role of the skeleton does this picture show? So at the beginning, we talked about those three roles up at the first paragraph. Can you figure it out? Right, it's right here. Does it support the body's weight and give it shape? Is that what it's showing me right there? Is it protecting the soft parts, inside parts of your body? Or is it showing how the body moves? One, two, or three. You're right, good job guys, it's showing how you move. Awesome, and I think it really helped me see how the muscles are working with your bones to help your body move. So, that was really cool. Now on page five, the text says that the skeleton in many animals is made of bones inside the skin. How could you explain what skeleton means without using the word bones? Okay guys, this is the hardest question of the day, for sure. So you're gonna have to say what is a skeleton, but you can't use the word bones. Do you think you can do it? Kind of like that game taboo where you have to explain something to someone, but there's those magic words. It's like a game, so you guys should be good at this. What do you think you would say? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so some of you guys had some great ideas. I was thinking, I heard somebody say, it could be described as the hard inner support of a human because ours is on the inside, right? I didn't use the word bones, but you can kind of tell what it is, right? Um, you could also say it is a rigid inner structure. You could describe it as a structure that holds all the soft parts of your body because it's protecting them, right? You could explain it by the rules that it has. So you guys are right spot on. Good job. Man, that was supposed to stump you guys, but you did it. All right. Your reading response is something you're going to do without me today. I'm um, just like every other day. And your question today is, how are the skeletons of humans different from the skeletons of some animals? So make sure you check with your teacher. This could be on Seesaw. It could just be you're writing this on a piece of paper and bringing it to class later today. But you guys did so good today. I can't wait to see you next time. Mrs. Lawson hopes that you have a great day. Bye, fourth graders.